was recently in Dubai when I shot this photo from my hotel room using my iPhone. Now I want to make a print for my office, but the image is too small and the quality isn't there. If we check the photo information in Photoshop, we can see that it was shot using a second generation iPhone SE. That's a stripped down version of the iPhone 8 with a 12 megapixel camera and a single 28 millimeter lens. And because I just use the standard iPhone camera app, the image is in the JPEG format. The camera app also increased the ISO to 160 to maintain a fast shutter speed and avoid blurring, but that's created a bit of noise which it then had to remove. If we look at the image at 100%, we can see that there's JPEG compression artifacts and the image quality is beginning to break down. To be honest, I'll struggle to print this at A4, never mind larger, but I still need to do my editing. If we check the size, you can see that it's just over 4000 pixels on the long edge, and the resolution is only 72 pixels per inch. That's not going to be enough to make a quality print, so I'll also need to change that. Currently, this file will produce a print of just over 10 inches by 13 inches, which is too small for my wall. I need something around 17 inches on the long edge, and it will need to be printed on A3 plus paper. Now let's look at the image after editing on my iPad. In case you're wondering, I use Snapseed for this, and I'll be showing that editing in a later video. Looking at the image, you can see that I've fixed the perspective problem. I've also improved the saturation, but I wasn't able to correct the JPEG compression problems in the sky. The sky is degraded because this is only a JPEG image, and the camera app on my iPhone already applied a lot of noise reduction. To fix the photo and make my enlargement, I'm going to be using Topaz Photo AI. Although this does work as a plugin for Photoshop and Affinity Photo, we'll need to use it in the standalone mode. That's because you can't resize the image if it's being used as a plugin. When I open the image, the software analyzes it and it applies adjustments that it detects are needed. With this image, it's just applied sharpening, but there is a problem with this that we'll return to in a minute. Now let's change the settings in the software to get the results we want. I'll start by resizing the image using the upscaling feature. Notice that when I click the heading, it expands to show the options available. I'll use the two times option to double the image size on the short and long edge. The size is then displayed in the pixels below this. If I change the units from pixels to inches, you can see the image is huge. That's because the photo resolution is only 72 pixels per inch. Let's change that now to 300 pixels per inch that's needed for a photo print. Now we can see the long edge of the image is around 27 inches, so it's more than enough for my print. Below this, we then have four different AI models to choose from. For most photography, the standard or high fidelity options appear to be best. The high fidelity model is really for images taken with a high quality camera. For my iPhone SE image, the standard model also works well. Now we have three sliders we can use to enhance the results. The compression slider fixes the compression artifacts we saw earlier in the sky. Looking at the sky now, we can see the slider is doing a great job of fixing it. The other two sliders are used to remove noise and blur in the image. Down below, we then see a message saying that the sharpening has been deactivated because the upscaling filter can handle it. Whilst this is true, I'm still going to set the two sliders to their minimum and instead use the sharpening and denoise filters separately. Let's now look at the remove noise option where we can see three AI models. Because my iPhone camera app has already applied noise reduction when capturing the original image, we only need to use the normal AI model. I'll then set the strength setting to around 20 because I don't want to make this image appear too smooth. I'll also use the recover original detail slider to ensure I don't accidentally remove fine detail from the image. As with the upscaling filter, we also have a deblur slider, which I'll set to the minimum. Instead, I'll use the sharpening filter to remove any blur in the image. If we open that now, you can see that it's set to sharpen only the subject. If I was to turn that off, it would apply sharpening to the entire image, but we don't want that. 
Let's click the option to edit the subject so we can see what's been selected. Although the software will auto detect the subject, it hasn't worked well with this image. But if I tell the software this is a landscape image, it selects the buildings now, but not the sky. As with the other filters, you can see a choice of AI models to use. It's worth checking these, as they can produce quite different results depending on the content of the image. I've already checked, and the standard version 2 works well for this image. I can then set the strength of the sharpening to apply. As I'll be printing this image, I'm happy to use a higher level of sharpening so the building detail is clear. If we take a look at some of that, you can see the improvement the filter is now making. As with the other filters, we also see a denoise slider, which I'll set to the minimum because I'm using a separate denoise filter. The image is now ready for output, so I'll click the Save button. This opens the export settings for the new image. You can see that the new image file name will have the suffix topaz appended to it. It will also be saved to the original folder, and I'm using the JPEG format set to maximum image quality. I can then click the Save button to complete the processing. Now I can't show you the results in detail, but they do match the quality we see in the software preview. The best approach I can recommend is to download the trial software to test it with some of your own images. It's certainly made a significant improvement to most of my iPhone photos. Now all that remains is to print the image at A3+. And if you want to know how to make great prints every time, you need to watch this video next. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and please share this with others. I'll see you soon for another video.